this is Steve and Stevie. This is this is our little Kubota we just picked up. Uh, we're gonna probably flip it. Um, it's got some problems. I went to look at it for a lady that had some hydraulic leaks. Um, all four cylinders on the lo on the loader bucket. It's got an LA301 loader bucket on it, and they're all leaking, pouring out like crazy. So I was gonna fix that for her and found that she had some electrical problems. I fixed that, serviced the motor and the cooling system, um, hydraulic oil, and found that the motor didn't want to run. It had a lot of blow-by, and the motor is wiped out. It's got 380 hours on it, and the motor's junk. So I don't know if they ran it out of oil, uh, serviced it, and didn't fill it back up, or what they did to it, but I've got to pull the motor out of it and rebuild it. Um, the lady didn't want to put uh, money into it, because she really didn't have it, bless her heart, and um, it's a 20-year-old tractor. She didn't want to put the money into it. So I'm going to rebuild the motor and fix the hydraulics. And we've had it run. We've mowed with it a little bit, but it, it definitely the motor definitely hurt. It's got a lot of blow-by. So um, if we can get it to start <clears throat> later, I may show you that. But um, other than that, it's in really good condition. Very low hours. Um, so it's just been sitting in a barn. And uh, so we'll get some video of building this and we'll go from there. I'm pulling the motor out of it right now. Um, just doing a breakdown, get the hood off. I'm gonna pull the steering wheel and the gas tank and the dash back and hopefully then we'll be able to pull this, this motor out. So um, um, get it out and get it apart today. Hopefully we can uh, um, get the head off and see how the cylinders look. Um, see if we can get lucky on this motor, but uh, I doubt it. Hey, uh, I ended up having to break this tractor back in half, and because uh, um, just there was no way I had to get the belly mower off of it and the, the hydraulic subframe connect or off of it. Um, so I ended up breaking this motor down a little bit. Um, the pistons are are okay. They got a little scuffing on them, nothing bad. Crank's in excellent condition. I haven't mic'd it yet, but I don't I don't have any reason to think it's not going to be right on the money. Um, but the boards have got some serious wear. They're not scuffed, but they're just worn. So I don't know what the Fruit Loop did to this thing. I don't know if it ran it out of oil, ran it low on oil for a long period of time. It never changed the oil. It's, this motor got 380 hours on it, and that's it. That's 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 one or two oil changes for these little Kubota diesels. Um, so I don't know what's going on. As you can see we've got the tractor broken down here, um, split in half. Um, so. Once I get some parts in, I, I've got to decide whether I'm going to go half a millimeter over on the piston and do a bore or have them do liners. So I'm going to talk to the machine shop and see what they can get liners for. Because last time the liners kind of bit me that I, well, I did liners and that was very expensive compared to just having it bored or having them supply liners. So i, I got to see about that. Um, the head looks good. I don't even think I'm going to do the head. but. It's a shame because this thing is super, super low hours and the tractor's in really nice condition. Um, this must is just a lack of maintenance um, in, in the worst way. So we're going to end up ordering some pistons and uh, bearings and gasket set and uh, get this thing going. Okay, so we're looking at these bores on this um, on this little engine, and I was really hoping that maybe they had just, for some reason or other, somehow overheated it a little bit and the rings lost tension or something like that, but um, I started looking at the bores and they're in good shape, you know, as far as like not being scored or torn up, but um, I start, I went to mic them, mic the bores and, and, and pistons, and I started noticing there's a real groove at the top of the cylinders, and it catches your finger and if you do that you don't even need to go any further what's really funny to me is this lap the number two is really bad and it's 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 very odd uh, like I said this motor is really low hours uh, 380 hours but um, I can't think that anything other than than they just didn't change the oil so um, it's gonna get a complete going over and uh, get the crank polished and um, a uh, new bore on these uh, cylinders and uh, put it back together.
Okay, we're back uh, putting this little Kubota D905 back together. Um, we're putting the uh, bearings on the crank in these uh, bearing blocks. Sorry, I'm on the video. I'm by myself here. I'm mildly retarded. Uh, this is a uh, this is how the Kubotas do this. They put, the, put them in the bearing, the inserts in the bearing blocks, and you put them around the main journals. So uh, let's see. Yeah, right here on this one. So, um, well, what's odd about these is that it's got three different size main bearings on on the crank mains. Uh, it's got I don't remember what the size is on on this front one, but it hammers in the front of the right in the front of the block. A lot of Kubotas do that that I've seen. And then they have on this 905, it's got 48 millimeter um, bearing inserts on this one, and the bottom one, they're 52. So uh, my ignorance on that, but uh, learned something. We got our block back from the machine shop. These guys were fast. They did it in 24 hours. Uh, I had the block board uh, half a millimeter, 20 thousandths over. And uh, here is the crank uh, front bearing on the crank. It drives in. That's already been done. So we're starting to assemble the block. Um, I'll show you when we're putting it in the block. It slides right in the back of the block um, instead of being two halves like, um, like an American V8 or any other American um, being built. So, all right, let's get this uh, crank put back together and we'll get the block up here on the table and, and start putting the crank in. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention is that your thrust bearings uh, go on the back block on this 905. There's uh, tabbed ones here and uh, the non-tabbed ones on these and they just set in place. Put a little assembly lube or grease on, a, on the back of them to hold them in. They'll st make them stick to the block when you're setting them in. And lubricate. You know, I like to use uh, this Lubriplate 105. Uh, I've been using it for years and years, but um, in a pinch, you can use motor oil or just about anything, but there's a lot of other ascent engine assembly lubes that are very good out there. So, But I really like this 105. You can build a motor and it can sit for years and it doesn't run out. It always stays there and uh, it does a great job on startup. So anyhow, I just wanted to let you know about these uh, thrust bearings. Don't forget those. Measure them um, and uh, you know, make sure your new ones are, are the same size or just a thousandth or two larger from where uh, than your old ones. I'm going to pass on some, as much information as I can. These bearing cases here, um, bearing blocks, um, the back one's got holes in the back so you don't get these confused. Do one at a time so you don't get them confused. Um, this is like A and B they call it, but it's actually cast into the back side that it says flywheel on it on both halves. There is some numbers on it on the mating halves and they're the same number from top to bottom so you'll know what which way to mate the funny thing is is that this back one goes towards the gear case and a and b here a and uh, b go towards the flywheel the numbers are on the back side so i had to double check that but you know if you guys are ever assembling one of these you know just uh keep that in mind you know because uh it's a little strange but okay Moving on. All right, we're fixing to slide this crank in here. Um, usually you put the block on the table because they slide right in the back. This is the back of the block. And um, these slide in here and then there's bolts. Right here, that bolt it into place and you torque those bearing blocks. It's very, it makes the crank very strong. Um, this crank mic'd out perfect. Um, so I put standard bearings back in it, uh, rods and mains. Um, this poor motor was just very low hours, but I think somebody like neglected an oil change or <laughs> I don't know what, but it is a shame. 370 hours. Um, so we're going to slide this thing in and torque it all down and uh, we'll show you what it looks like afterwards, but we're, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So I was putting this crank in here and I was able to get the seal retaining housing on the back. And of course I, I want to put the new seal in it. so. I pulled it out and it was like glued in place so I had to really rack it to get it out and I go to I put the new seal in and I didn't test fit it on the crank of course this is a, one of those Chinese engine kits um, I've had good luck with the pistons and hard parts so far you know bearings and things like that but here is the seal retaining housing it's marked up which is just down because you can see how awesome that fits on there so this thing working out today. 
so that ain't happening, so I'm going to have to source a seal from someplace else. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and torque these in. I haven't done that yet. I, I don't remember what it is. It's like 32 foot-pounds or something like that. And I'm going to get it back on the engine stand here and um, get the rotating assembly all put together, hopefully, and head on. I can put this on, you know, after the fact, but it's, it's very aggravating. But when you, if you're doing one of these Chinese kits, just watch this stuff. Because, uh, you know, the parts look to be pretty good quality, but, you know, I don't know what's going on with the, these guys getting in there. Another thing I want to point out, um, on these little Kubotas, I've seen these cam plugs come loose, and you'll build a motor, put it in the vehicle, or back together in your tractor, and wonder where oil's pouring out at. So, uh, check these cam plugs, um, and they're marked in an SAE size. I think the last one I did was like inch and, inch and three quarter or something like that, but... Just check these while you're in there, make sure they're tight. Um, all right, well, we'll get back to you, we'll get this thing going, and I gotta swap pistons out on the connecting rods and check the wrist pin bearings, so, all right. Okay, hey, we're back uh, putting this rotating assembly together in this Kubota. Um, this is, you know, this is another indirectly injected engine, IDI. Now, um, they, the piston and the connecting rod have to be oriented the proper way. So uh, what I do before I take them apart, is I just take a quick a marker and mark them. The connecting rods always have marks on them that'll say which ends go together. But I like to mark it just in case. I mark the the um, the location of the piston so I can orient it because these are an indirectly injected engine is going to be a flat top piston. Direct injected is going to have a big cup in the, right in the middle. But you want to mark it. It's got to go the same way. So when you get your new piston, you can put it on. I even marked the new one that it's laid out the same way. Um, so what I did is, is I drove out the old bushing, uh, wrist pin bushing, because they'll wear and they, they supply them, so I put new ones in. So when you're going back together, put one of your, take one of your sir clips and put it in, and then start your, start your wrist pin in, uh, on this side. Now to drive it, uh, I'm getting sidetracked here, you drive it, I got this nice uh, blue point driver. And they got a bunch of different sizes. This one just fit it just right. In a pinch, you could use a socket. Um, that's a sorry way to do it, but I've, I've done it. Um, so get it started in there. Make sure you use some engine assembly lube um, or, or at least motor oil. Um, and um, and I've, got, I've got the wrist pin bushing and the wrist pin itself lube. Push it on in there. And you know, make sure that your snap rings, excuse me, your cert clips, your, your wrist pin snap rings are in place properly because if you lose one of these you're going to wipe out a cylinder so i like to short put them a little short and then shove them into place i like to hear it snap in there you go snap twice so we know that's lubed it's in it's oriented properly this connecting rod and piston's done so we're going to set it to the side and do the next one we'll do two more just like this and uh, then we'll put the rotating assembly together and torque it all down put these rings on these pistons and uh, these kits come with a two-piece oil ring instead of a instead of a three it makes it a little easier so you have the oil ring there's two parts to it there's the inner uh, spring part that actually retains oil to lubricate the piston in the cylinder um, you got the number two compression ring on and if there's marks on the tips of the rings right there that always goes up and then a compression ring on a diesel a lot of times you get a molly ring like this one here this is a cast iron ring and be careful you can snap these and then this is a molly ring these are pretty tough but um, it might just be chrome face cast iron it's hard to say but um so we're gonna start we'll start with the bottom ring first so we're gonna put it on and uh get a little oil on your fingers and run run some oil in there We're gonna leave the mess out of it anyhow to begin with. So get it in the groove. Get it snapped 
down in there. Now we got the opening on this thing right here, so we're going to offset this. Coach. Alright, so we got this, we're going to put this uh, outer oil ring on here. Um, these are outside snap ring pliers. I've been using these for piston ring and stones for a long time. Uh, they do a good job. Just don't scratch up your piston. You'll be alright. It's not a big deal. If it's a molly ring, a lot of times I've used my fingertips like on some dirt bikes and stuff like that. Make sure it's locked in there. Make sure it fits down in the groove real good. Give it a little squish. Push it around. Okay. So now we've got our opening over here on this one. We want to offset. They say like 120 degrees. As long as you're not lined up. So I just put it in thirds. You know? Uh, I got the top in here. So just a little bit of oil. Okay. Find the numbers. This is the top. So we're going to put this on here. Cast rings you got to be careful with. You can snap them. Um, but they're pretty tough. You can do it with your fingertips. Unless you're a girl. So just offset your gaps. Otherwise compression will be leaking out. But they rotate in their lives. They rotate around. Alright. Marks up. I'm going to put this groove or this opening over here. Okay. There we go. We're on. Looking good. So there's one. Do the other two and then we'll, we'll start putting it together, okay? My ring compressor on here. This is the little crank down type. It's made by a company called Lyle. There's another one like KD. They're both very good. They're not the most uh, high end, but I've put a lot of motors together with this little ring compressor. I've got better ones for like a straight four inch bore or four inch 30,000 bore. So what I'll do is I'll tighten it down and then I tap on it and it seats the rings and lets everything wiggle around down in there real good. And then you crank it down a little more and I'll tap it with a wooden dowel or, or the butt end of a screwdriver. Okay, now, I lube the mess out of the pistons, I lube them real good because I want to slide in, you know, with as little effort as possible. You need to make sure you're oriented properly, and uh, on this one it's, uh, the little arrow on the piston goes towards, uh, towards the uh, injector pump side and the intake valve is forward. Getting our bearings uh, set in here on the connecting rod. And there it is. Always, always, always. A little bit engine assembly lube or motor oil, worst case. Kubota only specs out motor oil, so whatever you want to think about that. It's fun. So there we go. So it is, this piston is ready to go in. I've got the ring compressor on. Make sure this is number three. I've got the journal all the way on the bottom is what I like out of the way. We'll get this thing started in here like that. I like putting that like that. Um, so you grab it, see if you can tap it down in there. I hate, I hate using a handle, hammer handle, but nothing works better. All right, you just want to keep driving until you get your rings down inside the board, then you're, you're home free. You just got to go down until you can get your hand on the connecting rod and start working it up to the journal. You don't want to scratch the journal up. And you guide it on her, making sure that your bearing insert stays in, this, in, its, in its proper spot. Okay, so that's in. Now, for the heck of it, we're just going to do this one. We're going to flip it completely on its side here. So you can see the other side of it. You can see the bearing here, so you want to make sure it didn't pop out one side or the other. You've got your other in the, in the bearing cap and the connecting rod cap. Make sure it's oriented properly. I don't remember what the torque is on us. It's like 
I don't know, 25 or 30 foot pounds, but I, I'll, I'll look it up. But we're gonna get them set in place first. I like to lube the bolts, which I've got oil on them. You always should have oil on your bolts or engine system to lube, get a proper torque. Okay, so we're just gonna continue on, get the other two put in. All right, so we've got the injector pump and shut down and throttle levers on it. It's pretty straightforward on these little on, on these little diesels. Um, got the pistons rotating assembly and everything's torque all pan on. Um, don't forget that on the crank snout there's an O-ring that goes right there that seals, um, helps seal the oil pump and the timing cover. And actually not dab it, it helps uh, stopping um, oil from wicking down the splines. Um, so you gotta time this motor. This is the injector pump cam, and you can see there's three marks on this center one, three marks on the injector pump cam. Here is the valve cam, single dot, dot, dot on that. And on this one, it's very hard to see on the crank, but there's double dots, the top dead center. And then, so once those are lined up, this one over here does not matter because it's just a governor. It spins and throws a weight out to slow the, injector pump from uh, adding more fuel. So we're going to get the head bolted on, torque down, and the timing cover and we were wrapping this thing up. Alright, we're going to start torquing this head down. Um, um, it says 50 foot pounds and there's a sequence. I think I got the sequence in my head. So I'm going to try to remember it as well because it's on my phone. Um, so usually it's starting to center and they work their way out. I like to at least do a couple steps on the torque. They're saying just a straight 50 foot pounds, but um, and I'm sure it's fine. But I'll do 25 and then torque at 50 and then retorque it again. So this is a multi layer shim gasket, which I don't really like these that much. So we're going to put in all the push rods, make sure they're in the lifters. I slid the lifters in before the head. So we're going to put a little dab of lube on them. And you can feel them go into a little cup in there and they'll make a little suction, especially when you have some type of lube on them. That way you know you're set properly. You feel it go down there. And it kind of self-guides down in there, but you still want to verify it. Because I've seen people punch holes in things when, when, when uh, push rods come out. Put a little dab of assembly lube or motor oil in the, on everything. Now, the book says to torque this rocker arm assembly down to 15, 15, I'm gonna wipe it off, 15.9 to 19 something. 19 feet. So, thank you. Get it in there. Your rocker arms are rotated properly. And aren't. Now, we're going to start putting the, catching the push rods with the rocker arms. You just shove them down in there, you tip them down in there before you actually start it all the way to the bottom, and that holds everything in place. And then give it a little shove down, get the nuts. Stuff like this, you're always going to have machine washers. And these studs also will do the valve cover at the same time. We're going to tighten these down and then we're going to run the, run the valves. Alright, let me get this torque down to uh, about uh, 17, 18 foot pounds and we'll do the valves. Alright, we're setting the clearance on the valves here. Setting it at what factory spec is eight thousandths, so and it's too loose. There we go. When I set when I set one, I hit it with this tire chalk. That way, I know it's done. Um, we're setting the number one cylinder. It's on top dead center. I only like to do one at a time because it. In fact, I'm going to do it that way. So. All right, intake's going down, so you know the exhaust. Excuse me. 
um, backwards. The exhaust is going down so you know the intake is open or closed all the way. So I'm going to reset this one now. Okay. A little three cylinder. It's not like doing a Detroit diesel. We got four valves per cylinder. Alright, so what we're going to do. We're just going to watch for one to close. And then we're going to do the opposite one. Like right here. Is that way you always know it's on the base circle of cam. I've seen too many that they're having a little bit of an overlap issue. That's too loose. And uh, then your valves aren't set right. All right. Now. All right, so now the other one's going down. Let's do this one. We got the valves run. They're all set. Um, only thing left is uh, putting the valve cover on and the timing cover for the most part. And you know, there's a couple O-rings that go on the front timing cover. You just have to pay attention to that one here and one there, and you just have to make sure those are there. And you, we're wrapped up. You know, the, the rear main seal I've got to put in yet. Um, injector lines. That stuff's always pretty straightforward. So that's basically our build. Um, and we'll show you, hopefully show you, maybe put back in the tractor and and uh, make it smoke. Um, I spoke to you earlier about some O-rings on some ports. One here, one here, here, and here. They're for the corresponding holes on the engine here and here. And um, that's uh, oil pump, supply, discharge, um, and the filter in and out. So uh, make sure you get the O-rings on there before you uh, put your timing cover back on with the gasket so uh, a couple of uh, locating dowels always try to keep track of those you know so anyhow that's it and I'm gonna bolt this thing on and the motor is basically done okay there we go timing cover on injectors head torque down okay one last thing about these if you're not careful um, you put this uh, lower pulley on it's actually also a, a balance it's balanced with the crank so there is a dot to line up with the pulley on the crank and you make sure that's lined up and that's uh that's the last thing i can tell you about these things that, that are specific that i can think of back with this Kubota um, we got it back together and uh, put in the tractor um, I had a really hard time getting it to run um, I had to check compression check the timing pull the pull the injector pump apart check the injector pump can make sure the keyway wasn't updated all kinds of stuff making sure my dots were right um, check timing basic timing on the motor to make sure that there wasn't some flaw from the factory um, because it acted like it was really delayed timing but what I ended up finding was I was watching my battery voltage during cranking and it was dropping very fast the battery would, or the crank the starter would start uh, start to slow down um, thinking that my maybe my starter was failing but it was only drawing 300 amps um, what I ended up finding was this was getting really hot the shutdown song was getting really hot and what it was doing was starting to lose its hold um, keeping it in fuel position and it was starting to go to no fuel during cranking and giving me um, um, really a really bad time not starting so this motor would crank and crank and crank and crank and it would almost hit it sounds like it's just like just about to start but it would never would hit and um, blowing a lot of black smoke and uh, which usually means combustion and it's working but um, in it find out you know this has gone bad and um, I believe that that's why people were I, we're throwing a lot of ether down this motor and that's what wiped out the cylinders so um, that's my that's my theory on it I believe that's what happened so uh, you know I hate using ether um, 
but uh, so that that I believe was all the cause of this, you know, because it was it would work when you tested it, but during cranking it would start to uh, it was shorting and uh, having a real bad voltage draw and a current draw, and then um, hit wouldn't give them quite enough fuel, so that ended up being our problem, I believe. And I'm knocking the pin off of it. So I'm just going to stick it back in there, leave it unplugged. I can shut the motor down manually. I'll order a new one of these, and we'll get this tractor um, together and down the road. But that's where we're at right now, and we'll show you in a little bit when we're making smoke as soon as we get the radiator back in it. So.